Doris back here with another synth video. I wanted to mention something really quick before we get started. I do not own a PPG synth wave system, neither do I own a Fairlight CMI, and I don't have original framed receipts hanging on my wall. I'm pretty simple. I like synthesizers and the sounds they produce, and using them in my own music as well. I'm not an electrical or sound engineer, and I'm not here to outknow anybody, but there's always those few anal retentives who have to go on the offensive and attack me for slightly misphrasing things or simply citing what is known information. I base everything I say entirely on verifiable info that is easily retrievable online. So if you feel like I don't have enough credibility just because I haven't done 25 hour speeches at sound engineering colleges, then this video might not be a good fit for you. On to the video. Thanks to Luck Cook's recommendation, today we will be speaking about the PPG Wave System. The PPG Wave System was produced by Palm Products. It came in three series of hybrid digital and analog synthesizers. The PPG Wave System has been used by notable artists, which included David Bowie, Hollow Notes, Propaganda, Rush, Depeche Mode, Gary Newman, Psychedelic Furs, Tangerine Dream, and many more. Until about the 1980s, there was quite a bit of limitation on which tones could be obtained with commercial synthesizers. Most of them include Sign, Sawtooth, and Pulse, but around 1979, Wolfgang Palm of Hamburg, Germany, transcended this limitation by pioneering the concept of wavetable synthesis. Wavetable synthesis is a sound synthesis technique used to create periodic waveforms and has since been used as a primary synthesis method in synthesizers built by Palm Products and Waldorf Music, and as an auxiliary synthesis method by Ensonic and Access. Today, this method is still used in hardware synthesizers from Waldorf Music and in software-based synthesizers for PCs and tablets. Wolfgang's interest in synthesis technology began as a keyboardist in various local bands in his hometown of Hamburg, Germany. His corporation began when he started manufacturing modular synths in small numbers for different krautrock type bands like Tangerine Dream. It's said that in 1974, Palm produced one of the first programmable synthesizers, one of which was the System 340 synthesizer. But in 1978, Palm's efforts resulted in PPG's first wavetable synthesizer, which was called the Wave Computer 360, which provides the user with 30 different wavetables consisting of 64 waves each. While the expansive range of sound is evident, the absence of filters results in the Wave Computer 360 sounding kind of buzzy and thin, which hampered its original commercial viability. Palm's efforts to resolve the apparent shortcomings of the Wave Computer 360 would result in the creation of PPG's Wave series of synthesizers. When the PPG Wave 2 first came out, it provided eight note polyphony from a single oscillator per voice. This increased to two oscillators per voice with the revision to Wave 2.2. The PPG Wave system was particularly unique in its ability to combine into a transformer through its addition of the wave term. It could be connected to multiple peripheral PPG components via a custom bus such as a smart keyboard controller, eight voice expansion units, and the wave computer called the wave term, which could all be used for sampling, audio manipulating, editing, sequencing, and creating user-defined wavetables. This wave term computer came in model A, and Model B, and was basically a big box with visual display unit and the essential ability to equip floppy disk drives. The main difference between Model A of the wave term and Model B wave term is that the floppy disk drives were downsized. This screen didn't come with the light pen operated CRT display that the Fairlight CMI came with, but the PPG Wave system was after all a more affordable setup. The PPG Wave 2.2 still cost about 5,000 pounds in 1982, but was much less expensive compared to the Fairlight, which cost at least around 18,000 pounds at the same time. It's said that the whole PPG setup was intended to compete with a Fairlight CMI. Even if you choose not to equip the synthesizer into an even larger monster by surpassing the addition of the wave term, you didn't miss out on much since the PPG wave system was known for being user-friendly. Its signal flow was known to be rather good and its five octaves provided more variety in its sounds, especially compared to smaller synthesizers like the Mini Moog. It was somewhat criticized for sounding tinny though, but this was easily surpassable by using an analog filter. This was mainly made possible with the Synthwave 2.2 by the infamous SSM2044 filter chip. This classic four-pole low-pass filter chip has been known to be used in a large number of great synths, including the PPG Wave 2.3, the Korg Monopoly, the Poly 6, the Korg Trident, 
Seal Opera 6, and others. So you might be thinking, well, how many different variants of this PPG wave system were created? Well, the PPG wave system came in three main variants. All of them came out in their distinctive RAL5002 Ultramarine Blue color. Its first variant came out in 1981 under the name PPG Wave 2. It had eight oscillators, one per voice, 8-bit resolution, single modulation wheel, and CEM3320 voltage control filters. The second variant came out just one year later in 1982 under the name PPG Wave 2.2, which was improved to 16 oscillators, two per voice, kept in its original 8-bit resolution, had dual modulation wheels and SSM2044 voltage controlled filters. The third variant came out in 1984 as the PPG Wave 2.3, which kept its two per voice 16 oscillators, now had 12-bit resolution for samples via the wave term screen only, while otherwise maintaining the 8-bit resolution, had dual modulation wheels, also kept its SSM2044 filters, but this time came with 8-part multi-timbrality. MIDI support was added in its 1984 PPG Wave 2.3 version. Although the market for these synthesizers didn't last long, we have a lot to thank to the makers of the PPG wave systems, since they have introduced so much technology to the digital synthesizer world. The PPG wave synthesizers lasted from about 1981 to 1987, but with the introduction of synthesizers such as the Yamaha DX7, Korg DW8000, and Sonic synthesizers, the market for the PPG synths declined because there was simply much cheaper competition available. That being the main reason, it also didn't help that New digital sampling technology and reduction in memory prices facilitated the emergence of a new generation of standalone and easy to use samplers. Basically the same reason why the Fairlight CMI experienced such a market decline. These things combined resulted in the ending of the company's operations in 1987. You can still find a few of these for sale on places like Reverb for about $12,000 working. You can also purchase the Waldorf PPG Wave 3 online, which is about a $150 plugin that simulates the sound of the PPG Wave systems released in the 1980s to mix reviews. My personal favorite users of the PPG Wave system is Tangerine Dream. These guys are cool, <laughs> and I highly recommend checking them out if you like synth-heavy, krautrock type stuff. They even performed in medieval canon lit cathedrals for added effect, so it's definitely worth seeing. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which synth slash keyboard you'd like me to make a video about next time, and I'll see you then.